Good morning. Welcome to today's Maranatha House Gym. Mike from our sofa, your sofa. What sofa is it? The sofa has been now Maranatha House Gym. So, God bless you. I look forward to seeing you in a few minutes. A little early today, but thanks for waking up. Here we go. Thank you. 
God bless you all. Thank you for joining us extra early today. We've already got about 70 miles to play in about an hour's time. Well, less than an hour's time. So we're going to be on a race today. Um, the title for today's message, I always hope and pray that God's going to give us a message to share, not just a Bible study, not just um, some random scripture, not just something which tickles my fans, but something which is really important in today's uh, word, I believe, is a message. You know, you get a message, you think, oh, that's actually quite important to hear. This one's quite important to hear. And the title for today is A Word of Encouragement. A Word of Encouragement. Okay, that's the reason why we've been doing these things. You know that. Oh, and we've got, are we just passed? Charlie Kirk. A bit too quick. There we go. We missed it. There we go. Charlie Kirk has rang us up. Um, I kind of like him. He kind of annoys me, but he's an interesting guy. And I think he's become a Christian. He actually read. Someone sent him a Ray Comfort book, and uh, he recommended it. And he's employing um, 
some of the things he learned through this book and they seem to be making a difference. So that's really, really encouraging. So uh, he rang up and he said, uh, are you free? I said, I'm not free. I'm doing Maranatha house church live from our sofa to your sofa. He said, I haven't got a sofa. I said, oh, hey, well, look, if you want to join in, you're very welcome indeed. He talked to incredibly fast. Sunday, the 22nd of September. You know, that is that that is quite a lot of the years gone by. I hope you had a decent week. Um, elements of each and every week have probably been difficult and a blessing for each and every one of us. But I hope you've had a reasonable or even a good week. And look forward to catching up, Steve. Sorry missed you on Thursday, uh, but look forward to catching up real soon. Hopefully we'll be able to catch up this week. It would be brilliant. What have we got? We press the button and we go through today 1644. Wow, have we got a scripture for today? Heather, have you got a scripture for the day? Is there something you were reading? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wish you all the very best with that. Something I was reading. Well, I was reading about, um, I think it's Genesis chapter 11, is it? Where there's contention between Abraham and Lot, mm -hmm. and they got big flocks and the tribes people, as it were. And in order to allay that contention, Abraham takes the initiative actually and says to Lot, look, we, let's separate. You choose where you want to go. Abraham, really, really gracious. So Lot is looking, saying, oh, that bit over there, that looks really good. That plain of Jordan where Sodom is, I like the look of that. It's got lots of grass for my flocks. Seems like a really good idea. I was thinking actually how Abraham, he just trusted God. He want, where he should have, as the older one, chosen what he wanted, had first choice. But he didn't. Um, and I thought, it's really, we can trust God. It looks like Lot had the best bit, actually had the worst bit. He certainly did. He certainly did. We know the rest it of the story. good. You guess where that story goes. Yeah, I like that. Thank you, Heather. Sorry, it's a bit longer than you. Share yeah. for the day. Share for the day. So we press the button and we're going to pray. Here we go. Uh, Lord God. Sorry, darling. Sorry. All right, you ready? Okay. Uh, we're going to pray. A lot of different things to pray about, and we will end with the Lord's Prayer today. Lord God in heaven, creator of the universe. Lord, we see it's absolutely bucketing down out there. Um, and uh, we've got a long journey to do today. We just pray that you'd keep everyone safe on the roads today and keep us safe in our houses. Thank you, Lord, for our houses, our homes, our families, our friends. Thank you, Lord, for friendship. Um, I don't know what any of us would do without friends. You know, the friends are family are um, in a way just as important maybe more important than they are than a home and a house somewhere over a, some shelter lord we think of what's most important in life and family and friends are so important we bless you lord god for our family and our friends we pray that you'd be with all those that we uh, all met yesterday in different ways and over in bristol and in other places we pray for all those that we bump into along the way and we pray that you bless them, bless us today. Be with our dear ones. Be with those who are nearest and dearest to us. Be with the youngest person that we know, a little child that we, that we know. We pray that you bless new little ones on the way. We pray that you bless us older ones. I used to think I was about in the middle, but now I've kind of got to be three quarters of the way through by now. Um, Lord, but we thank you for our lives down here. We pray that you speak to us today. We want to hear what you have to say. We pray, Lord, that you'd especially be with the families of loved ones who've uh, left this life. Pray that you'd be with the the, the wild, the whole family, the, all, all those connected with dear Cain, um, whom we laid to rest uh, just this last uh, Wednesday. And we pray, Lord, that you'd be with this other dear family and this funeral service for um, Monday. We pray that you'd bless that time. Please be with... Um, uh, dear uh, families and friends and loved ones and wives and children and husbands who've lost uh, sons and daughters and um, uh, nearest and dearest, please, please bless them, we pray. For us who remember those who've gone some time in the past, please be with us all. Um, and that grieving in many ways never stops. It just changes through the years. But we look back and we remember Remember our loved ones. We pray, Lord, that you bless us today. We want to join in together in saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, looking at the picture we've got on there, uh, not least in the background there, we've got this depiction of war. And we wonder what the world has in store for itself in the days ahead with all of the conflicts that are going on. It's just horrendous, isn't it? You know, may the Prince of Peace come sooner yeah. than we expect. Amen. Say good morning, Mum. Good morning, good Matt. Morning. And good morning, Lily. If you're still there. Good morning, everyone. We're going to sing some songs. Okay, let's do this. Yep. I haven't set this up for anything. Let's just sing because I don't think we got time. Every five minutes, it's going to connect. Just, just give me a moment. It's fine. Uh, what time do you think? That. It doesn't. Just talk amongst yourselves. Have you got a number that you like? Well, how are you all doing at home? There we go. There we go. It's connected. Okay. Send forth the gospel. Let it run southward and northward, east and west. Hell Let's earth. do one okay. one one six. There is a higher throne. I'm going to need some words from up here, I think. Oh. Another, one. Another song. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Let's do. I don't know. See, there's only two verses in yep. there. Sorry, I wondered <laughs> what you were doing. I jumped easily. out my skin by. Okay, let's do one, 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 six. Let's try again. Take two. Sung so far. Let's do six, seven, four. There is a green hill. I'm going to say good morning wow. to Wendy. Hey there, Wendy, and your lovely lot down there, often praying for Longleat. Longleat Chapel. Do a couple of verses from this one. Yeah. 
listening to a nine, early 80s um, singer, pop singer, rock singer, um, a couple of days ago, and he's now 65, 70. He can't hit the high notes that he was known for either. <laughs> I was never known for high notes, and I'm never going to hit them. Here we go. Okay. Okay, let's do 672. There is a name I love to hear. Good song. Then you do a couple of verses. Yeah, the first two. feel like Rod Stewart at his worst when he says there's no way I can go on stage and they say Rod there's no way you can go on stage again and we've no idea why you went on there my voice is definitely no need to say it Steve not the finest but what song have we got now let's do I don't know if you've noticed the beginning of all these songs begins with there is oh. and it was I just felt that was kind of like an affirmation of truth you know, yeah. there is a higher throne. There is a green hill. There is a name. Yeah. Um, right. things. Good. And there is a fountain, fountain filled with blood. You know, this crazy first lyric there, isn't it? You know, first line of the song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Yeah. You know, gruesome picture, but it's 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 not uh, it's not gruesome when you know what it means. It's not gruesome. Uh, William Cowper died in 1800. Um, this is a, a beautiful song. Let's go for uh, three of these verses. We got two. Let's do two of them. Let's do uh, first and fourth. <laughs> Sins away. That is a great 
favourite song. It's a great song. That is my favourite. Okay, the last one. We need this one. Oh, okay. Which is Would You Be Free from the Burden of Sin? But there is power mm, in the blood. Yeah. Not a couple of minutes. Well. Yeah, it's There's wonderful power in the blood There is power, power on the working path In the blood of the Lamb There is power, power on the working path In the precious blood of the Lamb would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? It's power in the blood, power in the blood. Jesus, that was in the time. Keeping strong, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, a wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is In the precious blood of the Lamb. You know, one of the aims, in fact, the only <laughs> aim of this channel is to take us higher. In all different ways, it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but I can't remember quite what. Well done, you're still there, everybody. That's, that's impressive. It's a miracle of miracles, <laughs> wonder of wonders. What have we got today? Well, we've got to approve and recommend this. <laughs> That's right. Coming very soon, that epic podcast featuring this chap here, Lawrence. Uh, I'm not sure who this guy is, um, but this guy here, very eminent professor, Jerry. Um, and just get ready for this. Get ready for it because it's going to be good and it's going to be happening very, very soon. So you need to be ready for that. And we recorded our first pilot episode. It went viral. It was amazing. Uh, but there's a few editing tweaks that need to be done. And uh, it will be re-released very shortly. So we do approve of this. What psalm are we on today? Five. Well, let's go through it. 98, we've had 99, we've had 100, we've done 101, 102. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we've done 102, 103. We did 103. There's 104. Here we go. Any second now. 105, where is it? Where is it? Oh, we've got to think about it. Let's think carefully. You're right, 105, okay. Let's do a verse each. Oh, this one here, <laughs> the eternal faithfulness of the Lord. Oh, we've got in the background of all these. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvellous works, which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. And confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel for an everlasting, as an everlasting covenant. Do my prophet, that's not quite right. There's a verse missing there, isn't it? And do my prophets no harm. Okay, well, there we go. Uh, <laughs> saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance. When they were very few in number, sorry, when they were few in number, indeed very few and strangers in it. This is getting up early. Uh, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets to my heart. That's it. Okay. No idea what you're talking about. But here we go. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provision of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Yeah. God's word always comes to pass. Sooner or later, you go, ah, God was telling the truth all along. He prophesied and said what was going to happen. The king sent and released him, 
the rulers of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house, ruler of all his possessions. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. He performed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they did not rebel against his word. He turned their waters into blood and killed their fish. Their land abounded with frogs, sounds horrendous, doesn't it? Even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and lice in all their territory. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He struck their vines also and their fig trees and splintered the trees of their territory. He spoke and locusts came, young locusts without number. And ate up all the vegetation of their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He also destroyed all the firstborn in their land the first of all their strength. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quail, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and water gushed down. It ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. He brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the land of the Gentiles, and they inherited the labor of the nations. That they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's a great psalm. Psalm 100. And it gives a really good five. lot of detail. There's a lot of detail. About the exodus. Of, of what happened. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all there. It's really all there. Good. All there. And the question is, what was Heather going on about earlier on? Nobody knows. But maybe you know. Maybe you noticed. Was there a typo error? Here we go. Let's go for they some breaking. Been, it okay. like it. Maybe a slightly different version. Nobody knows. Yeah, it's just That's fine. It's not fine. It's not fine. <laughs> it is fine, but it's not fine. We have some bread and wine. We're now going to remember, as we're instructed to, the Lord's uh, death, his sacrifice for us until... He comes again. Lord God in heaven, we thank you so much for this wonderful plan that you came up with. Um, and it wasn't after the event of sin, but you knew all along uh, the way that it would have to be. When you created the world, when you made it all, you established it all, and you set man in the garden, woman in the garden, as beautiful place, this home for them to live in perfect harmony with one another and with the creation and with you, the creator. Um, you knew all along because you set things up in such a way to demonstrate, as far as we can tell, what you are like, who you are, that you would be known by your creation. You created a creation to know you and be subject to you. And it is good we find fulfillment in being subject to you, to being your servants, to being your friends, to being your children, to being on your side. And we rebelled against. And we remember right now the through the bread and the wine, your sacrifice, dear Lord Jesus, for us, the Son of God, God in the flesh. We say these phrases and these words, do we really understand it all? No. Do we accept it? Yes. And we look forward to knowing a whole lot more than we know now. We thank you, Lord, that one day we will see you as you are and we change from what we are into your likeness. We certainly see through a glass darkly, a bit like the glass here. I can see uh, the camera just about through it. I know it's there and I know you're here, Lord, I know you're there. I know that you're no distance away at all, but I can't quite see a little bit like our eyesight not being as sharp as it was when we were little children and growing up, when we could see everything that was going on around us. About us. We were really alert. Our senses were heightened. And as we get older, everything becomes a little less sensitive. But one day, 
we'll know as we're known and we'll see as we're seen and we'll understand as we are now understood. And we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon this bread and this wine. And we accept it as a gift from you, as a reminder of your body, which was broken for us. And we take this bread and we see on that night when you were betrayed, you took some bread and you broke it. You said, this is my body, which is given for you. I'm going to give my body, my life up, who I physically am. I'm going to give it up. For you, there's going to be this perfect Lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world, this sacrifice for you, disciples, and actually for any and all who will call out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. People, men and women, boys and girls, all around the world, each and every day, calling out and saying, can this sacrifice cover my sin also? And we, we did this many years ago, and it feels just as real today. We say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice for us. And if you haven't done that, why not say that now? Say, Lord Jesus, can your sacrifice cover my sins as well and pay the price for my sins? I don't want to have to pay for it myself, which is hell. I want you to pay the price for me, to, to, to pay for me. Would you pay for me, Lord Jesus? I don't understand it all, but I want what you're offering. And if you mean that from your heart, if you really mean it, you will be turning away from your sins. You'll be recognizing that your sins have kept you all the days of your life so far until this point. And you'll be going, well, I don't want my sins anymore. Of using God's name as a swear word, of, of uh, lusting after the things which won't and have never brought me happiness. You'll turn from those and you'll turn wholeheartedly to the Lord. It's a real sign of real conversion, that fruit starts growing on this tree. Lord, so we say thank you for this bread and, and we bless you for it as we remember your sacrifice for us, dear Lord Jesus. In a couple of hours time or slightly less than that, I'm going to be speaking on this bread and this wine over um, in Wokingham and value your prayers um, for the time that's spent over there. And we do pray for all the different churches that are around about or all, all over the world, um, especially the local ones. And we just pray, Lord, as many and perhaps all remember your sacrifice on the cross and that takes some bread now and later on, take some wine. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. For this wine, a picture of your blood that you died for us, you gave your body and then you died. And that soldier who speared your side and blood and water came out, a gush of it came out. Um, we think of that. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, from God's veins. We think of there had to be a sacrifice for sins. And we thank you that sacrifice was the one that really could do everything that was necessary. So we say thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wine, and we receive it as if it comes directly from you. And we bless you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Can't wait to see you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This very evening here, 7.30, if you're free, you're welcome to join us because we're going to be meeting here. Um, we're going to be looking further at what we're going to be briefly thinking about this morning, maybe some other things as well. So 7.30 this evening in our house. God bless you. Hey, we better get back over there. Lord God in heaven, we do just pray in our, our remaining moments um, before we have to quickly get ready and shoot off. We pray that you'd speak to us. We want to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
And when I say I want to hear what he has to say, you don't want to hear what I have to say um, or what Heather has to say or someone else has to say. You want to hear what God has to say. We need to hear from him and then pass it on. And I was praying, Lord, what do you want me to uh, say today? And really is something from him. Make sure that we take advice from him and those that really speak for him. Not everyone who says, oh, God has said this, God has said that. God has had often nothing to do with what uh, that person said. We need to be really discerning as to what God has actually said, what God has actually spoken. So what we got, uh, you can't handle the truth. Remember that expression is often used in um, action movies. You can't handle the truth. Uh, well, sometimes the truth is actually very hard to handle. It's, it's unpalatable. I prefer you to tell me something else. Just water it down a little bit. A little bit like pulling a punch. Um, when someone throws a fight and there's a boxing match and they throw the fight and they don't hit as hard as they would because there's a bet going down that the other person will win. So they throw a punch, but they pull it a little bit. They don't push it through. Do we really want to hear what God has to say to us? Have we listened carefully to the voice of God? Have we read his word with a true open heart? I remember reading up Dave Barrett on GWR Radio many years ago, and he said, uh, um, I've read the Bible, and uh, it's a load of rubbish. I said, have you really read the Bible with an open heart? And I can remember him saying, well, no. I thought, well, that's very honest. And so I wonder whether he really had read it. Who remembers Dave Barrett? I'm not sure whether he's still with us. So we want to read God's word with an open heart and say, speak to me. Here we go. Who is this? Who is this? This is ancient picture. You don't want to zoom in too much time because it's very fuzzy. But who is this ancient picture of? Well, it's a painting of, looks like a prophet to me, speaking to maybe, looks like two kings on a throne. A famous story from the Bible from 1 Kings and chapter 22. These two kings, can you remember the names of them, darling? Yeah. That's uh, correct. Jehoshaphat and Ahab. Two kings, Jehoshaphat and Ahab. I'm going to say they both had good days and Ahab had lots of bad days. Lots and lots of bad days. They were both influenced one more than the other in the wrong way at times. Ahab thoroughly influenced in the wrong way through much of his life. Alliances and a marriage with, you know it is, Jezebel. There's a clue. When someone said, well, what about going out with this girl, Jezebel? No, don't go out with Jezebel. Um, don't listen to her advice. He had lots of advice to give. Um, none of it was true. None of it was helpful. None of it was going to lead in a good direction. And her end was awful. Jehoshaphat, he was a great guy, but he made alliances. He kind of shook hands every night. Oh, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. And it was never all right. And every now and again, you could pick out when it wasn't right. Here we go. What have we got here? We've got just this tiny little passage here. A word of encouragement, please. The message for today is when someone just wants to hear something which will tickle their fancy, just tell me something that will make me happy. Just make me happy. I don't care what the cost is. Just make me happy. Just tell me something that I want to hear, something that will please me. Show me something that will give me um, a temporary high. It's a bit like a drug. And uh, I think often of Richard Ashcroft and his song, The Drugs Don't Work. And the, the line goes on, they just make it worse. You know, you have a temporary fix and then it's gone. You go, oh, okay, okay, I need some more, I need some more. A word of encouragement, please. There is a time for a word of encouragement, but actually let's forget that and say, God, just tell me what I need to hear, what you have for me. What does God have for us at any given point? Here's a little snippet from this story. Here we go. Then, this is from 1 Kings chapter 22, then the messenger who had gone to Micaiah, he was a good prophet. He was someone who would hear from God and no one liked him. That is an evident uh, indication of a real prophet. If you know someone, this is true, speaking to us Christians in particular here, if you know someone who has a prophetic ministry and you really, really like them and they're a lovely person, 
and they only tell you things that are amazing and encouraging, hmm, you would be very wise to step away for a moment and go, hang on a minute. All the prophets in the Bible, no one liked them. It's not completely true, but there, there was an emphasis towards what they said was nearly always warnings. You know, that goes for John the Baptist as well. People flocked to hear him, but he didn't. It wasn't a palatable message. It was repent and brood of vipers. It was, it was powerful and poignant. And Micaiah was exactly the same. There, they were from God and they had a word to say. And uh, it was unpalatable. unpalatable. It wasn't encouraging. There was an encouragement to turn from wickedness and turn to the Lord God. But a lot of people didn't want to hear that. Well, I, I want to be blessed as I am. And that's not what a prophet is all about. And then the messengers who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him saying, now listen, the words of the prophets, the others, with one accord, encourage the king. With one accord, they encourage the king. This is Ahab. With one accord, they encourage the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. Forget everything else of the day. Remember this bit here. They want, Ahab's messengers want, just say something nice. Say something nice. You know, I love, I love that quote from uh, that Roman Keating song, you say it best when you say nothing at all. Um, and actually, Micaiah was kind of torn a little bit in this moment. He's got a reputation of truth, of saying the way that it is, not in a nasty way, but just saying, well, actually, God says this. It goes on. Uh, and Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. It's what we're trying to do. Trying to do. And is it palatable? Is it successful? No. He's in prison. He's in prison. We feel a bit like we're in prison. Then he came, Micaiah came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall we refrain? And he answered him, said, go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver you into the hand of the king. That, deliver it, deliver it Ramoth Gilead, he will, he, you will have victory. So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And what does it actually say? I get my proper glasses on here. It goes on to say these words here. Verse 16. Then Micaiah said, I saw, this is the truth. You're not going to prosper. I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. These have no master. He's the master. Ahab's the master. Micaiah's saying, you're all going to die. This is your end. He told him the truth. What little simple things can we just look at very briefly just here? First little thing here. Just tell me what I want to hear. Just tell me what I want to hear. So, Micaiah said, okay, yeah, everything's going to be great. And I can imagine the prophets and everyone else going, oh, oh that's great. Yeah, everything's going to be good. But Ahab himself knows something. What does he know? Did you spy what he knows, Heather, with the conversation that goes on there? He knew that Micaiah wasn't telling the truth. Yeah. He was speaking the truth. He knew that Micaiah's message was always different to everyone else's his message was always different to everyone else's so when Micaiah says yeah okay I agree with the other prophets it's going to be great you're going to win you're going to get your land back and everything's going to be good cool he knew I don't know whether Micaiah said said it in a sarcastic way we're not told he says those words there Ahab this king who's a huge compromiser knows in his heart that isn't the truth. What is the alternative to winning? It's losing. You could say there's a draw and no one really dies and they will get scared, but it's bound to be, we're going to lose. Ahab knows the way it's going to work out. He knows. 
And if we don't trust in the Lord and we don't follow him, you, we know, you know, we know, we know where this goes. We know when our choices are as, and they're um, choices that we're following because we've been given advice and we've listened to the things of the majority. The majority have got it wrong. We're going to go on a broad way towards London in a few moments' time, and there'll be narrow little roads going off to the right and left. You know what? God wants us to get on that narrow road, a particular road, a road that does lead to life. We want to get off the broad way. We are in Bristol yesterday, and I was walking down the A420 into Bristol, and I noticed this plaque. You might have seen it. I posted it on Facebook. A memorial of George Whitfield and the Wesley Brothers, of where they stood and where they preached in Kingswood um, from the late 1700s into the 1800s. Incredible, the 1790, I think it was, until 1840. You know, for many years, they preached there. They shared the message. Oh, oh no, well, that is interesting. I have no idea where it's there. Okay, that is uh, very awkward and tricky. Actually, not going to be back on there. Let's just go down here if we can. Yeah. Um, Okay, right, okay. just come down there. Okay, so tell me the truth is the next one. I don't really, let me just pick it up so you can see it. Oops, let's put that down. Sorry. Tell me the truth. Just want to know the truth. Do you want to know the truth? Say, Lord God, I, I'm nervous of the truth. Help me handle the truth. And then you can't handle the truth. Well, to handle the truth that Micaiah said Ahab should have demonstrated that he could handle the truth. You know, tell me the truth. How many times am I going to ask you? I don't want to hear what it is. Say, Lord God, even though I'm going to find this truth hard to handle, help me to put it into practice. I don't want to do this. I don't feel inclined to do this, but I do believe and trust in you. Ask God to help you as I ask God to help me to handle the truth, whether it's about illness, whether it's about uh, new beginnings, whether it's about finances, whether it's about all manner of important decisions or even small decisions in life, what we eat, what we drink, um, who we speak to. Lord, what do you want me to do? Commit all your ways to him. He'll direct your path. And then lastly, I think we've got one more. There it is there. You know the truth. And we just mentioned that, that, Ahab, he knew the truth. And you know, what is the truth? Jesus is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you know, if you'll know, when you come to a place of knowing the truth, it will be when you live in the truth, when you find a home in the truth. It's not a rare friend of yours. Truth becomes your close, closest companion. When Jesus becomes your closest companion, your dearest friend, then and only then can you handle the truth because the Lord himself will look after you and guide you into all truth. What happened to Ahab? He died. He died. Just in the coming days, he died. A few days of life left for him. He heard from Micaiah, Achaia saw all Israel scattered. And do you know what? He's still kind of in that place. It's still waiting to, um, to turn to the Lord. It's still looking for the Lord in all the wrong places. Find the Lord today. Trust in him today. Hear what he has to say to you today. And if you have rejected the truth so far in your life, why not today turn to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the past. Will you guide me into the future? And he will do exactly that. Okay, there we go. May God's blessings surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his ways. May his presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in joy, go in peace, go in love. And we've got a little bit there. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you and be peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for bearing with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next week. I have no idea what's happening next week. Could be back to the normal time. Normal time, back to nine o'clock.
Oh, well done. That's an impressive yeah. number of it people is up there. Really Thanks grateful so much for joining us. For joining us. And if you'd like to join us in person, which is a whole lot more relaxed, a couple of hours we do, 7.30 to 9.30. And all we finish pretty much on time. Um, and it's a really good time. You'd be super welcome. Now, value press now as we shoot that direction really fast, although keeping within the speed of it. Cool. What a nice. See Love you, you all. See you soon. Bye bye. bye.